Hello everyone, today we're going to be solving AQA GCSE Chemistry Higher Tier Paper 2. In this particular video, we are solving June 2018. This one is a part 2 of the video where we're going to be solving from question number 6 to question number 10. This question is about polymers. Polyesters are produced when monomers join together to lose a small molecule. Name the small molecule lost. So, when polyester form, these are condensation polymerization. So, the small molecule that will be lost is water. Polypropene is produced from propene. Complete the structure of polypropene in the equation. To complete the structure, the double bond must be broken. So we're going to give a single bond between the carbon and the rest of the molecule we're going to draw as it is. Carpets are made from polypropene wool, a mixture of polypropene and wool. Polypropene wears out more slowly than wool. A mixture of polypropene and wool to make carpets is more suitable than using just polypropene or just wool. Suggest why. Polypropene comes from non-renewable source. Polypropene requires a lot of energy to make. Polypropene is not biodegradable. A wool carpet needs replacing more often. Wool requires the use of large areas of land which could be used to grow food and crops. So using a mixture of both of them provides an advantage, all right, that we have a certain proportion from a non-renewable source and certain proportion from a renewable source so as not to pressurize both of their sustainability. Polymer fibers are used to make firefighter uniforms. Table 3 shows some properties of two polymer fibers. For example, you can see polypropene and polyester. Their density, their melting points, their flame resistance, and their water absorption is nicely mentioned here. Okay, good. Evaluate the suitability for polypropene and polyester for firefighters uniform. Evaluate the sustainability of polypropene and polyester for firefighter uniforms. Advantages of polyester. Polyesters are better at flame resistance, so they burn less easily. Polyesters, they have higher melting point, so they melt less easily and they have a very high water absorption, meaning that they are less likely to ignite when, you know, a fire, in a firefighting situation. Disadvantages of polyester. The disadvantages of polyester is, uh, you know, it has very high density. You can see it's very heavy, all right? So the uniform is very heavy, absorbs water, so firefighter gets wet and absorbs water, so uniform becomes even more heavy, all right? So, yeah, you know, a combination of both of them could be a better. A combination of polypropene and polyester could give a better uniform. Older cars are tested each year to measure the amount of pollutants contained in exhaust fumes. Table 4 shows the maximum allowed percentages of exhaust pollutants for petrol cars. Age of car in years 16 to 24. Alright, maximum allowed percentage of exhaust pollutants. Carbon monoxide 0.3. Unburned hydrocarbon 0.02. Explain how carbon monoxide is produced when petrol is burned in car engines. So in terms of producing carbon monoxide, when petrol is burned in incomplete combustion, in, in insufficient supply or limited supply of oxygen then carbon monoxide is produced suggest two reasons why the maximum allowed percentage of carbon monoxide has been decreased for newer cars carbon monoxide is toxic so it's poisonous all right so as a result there is a greater concern for public health due to carbon monoxide pollution more cars in the road so if there is more carbon monoxide produced by a single car then it will very soon you know enter the atmosphere and contaminate everything around since the new in engines are more improved all right so uh the tolerance should be lesser so that even if the number of cars increase in the road you know it's not a big deal all right and catalytic converters have been introduced and catalytic converters uh reduces the amount of carbon monoxide technically to zero i mean not until the engine is starting cold all right as the engine keeps on running carbon monoxide level goes to zero because of the catalytic converter by the way catalytic converter needs to stay clean by the way so it is recommended that it needs to be cleaned from time to time. There's, these are additional points that I'm writing. You may write them as well, all right, if you don't remember the primary two points. Give one reason for having a maximum allowed percentage of unburned hydrocarbons in exhaust fumes. Unburned hydrocarbons causes health problems, alright? And unburned hydrocarbons produces carbon, which can lead to global deeming. So the main concern for this would be to reduce health problems 
or to reduce global dimming. Oxides of nitrogen are pollutants contained in exhaust fumes because describe how oxides of nitrogen are produced when petrol is burned in car engines. Nitrogen from atmosphere reacts with oxygen from atmosphere at a high temperature in the car engine due to the spark plug. You know, as the spark plug gives the spark, the nitrogen reacts with oxygen. Catalytic converters are treated to car exhaust to reduce the amount of pollutants released into the atmosphere. Nitrogen dioxide is an oxide of nitrogen. Nitrogen dioxide reacts to produce nitrogen and oxygen in catalytic converters. Complete the equation for the reaction. So, when we have nitrogen dioxide, we convert it into nitrogen and we produce oxygen. So, 2NO2 produces N2 plus 2O2 gas. Give two effects of atmospheric pollutions which are caused by, which are reduced by using catalytic converter. So, since we are reducing the amount of nitrogen dioxide, we can reduce acid rain. Also, the acidic oxides reduction will decrease respiratory problems in people. Since we are decreasing the amount of carbon monoxide using catalytic converter, that means carbon monoxide poisoning will be less. People are going to suffer from less respiratory problems. And also, because we are reducing the amount of carbon produced by the engine, so we are going to reduce the amount of global smog or global dimming. The catalyst in catalytic converter is a mixture of three elements. Where in the periodic table are these elements most likely to be found? We are going to find it in transition metals because catalysts consist of platinum, palladium, or uh, you know, uh, you know, expensive metal in that particular group. Mostly platinum and palladium. And the other one. Uh, so how would you get to this particular answer without no uh, without knowing that what it is? Actually, they are not alkali metals because group one metals are alkali metals. They are not halogens because the halogens are non-metals. Global gases are gases. They are non-metals. So transition metals will be the answer. Platinum, palladium, the other one could be probably rhodium. Rhodium is a good one, all right, in terms of using as a catalyst. A student investigated how temperature affects the rate of reaction between magnesium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid. The method used, heat hydrochloric acid to 30 degrees Celsius in a conical flask, add magnesium carbonate powder to the conical flask. Measure the loss in mass and contents every 20 seconds for 140 second. Since we are reacting magnesium carbonate with acid, the carbonate produces CO2 which will be lost as a gas. That's why the mass will decrease. The deepest steps 1 to 3 with hydrochloric acid heated to 50 degrees Celsius. So as we have higher temperature, the faster the rate of reaction going to be. Explain why the contents of the conical flask lose mass. So our answer for that will be because a gas is produced or we can say carbon dioxide is produced. If you cannot say uh, carbon dioxide is produced, you know that at least that gas is produced when carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid. So a gas is produced and that can escape which escapes Table 5 shows the student's result for hydrochloric acid at 30 degrees Celsius. So we can see, you know, in time in seconds and we have the amount of loss in grams. Now draw a line of best fit to plot the data in table 5 from table 5 to this particular graph. At 0 we had 0 and at 20 we had 0 0.26. Then at 16 we had 0 0.67, 60, 0. 7 shows the student's result for hydrochloric acid at 50 degrees Celsius. Determine the rate of reaction at 50 degrees Celsius when the lost mass is 0 0.95. So at 0 0.95 would be this particular point with this particular point. Now, in order to find out the rate at that particular point, we would have to draw a tangent only touching that particular point. <laughs> then we have to calculate the rise over run to find out the gradient. So 130 for the run and the rise is 40. So rise is 0 0.4 and the run is 130 seconds. 0 0.4 grams. So our rate will be 0 0.4 grams divided by 130 seconds. So the answer is 0 0.00 P0769, which we have to give the answer in three significant figures. So it will be 0 0.0031 grams per second. This question is about methanol. Methanol is broken down in the body during digestion. What type of substances act as a catalyst in this process? Because it is in a human body, so obviously it will be enzyme. 
in industry, methanol is produced by reacting carbon monoxide with hydrogen. The equation for the reaction is given below. Okay, so we can see that there is a reaction of 1 is 2, 2 is 2, 1 mole ratio. How many moles of carbon monoxide reacts completely with 4.00? 10 to the power of moles of hydrogen. This is a very good question because we have a 2 is to 1 ratio. So 2 molecules of hydrogen reacts with 1 molecule of carbon dioxide. So whatever the molecules of hydrogen we have, we'll just divide by 2. So it will be 2.0 into 10 to the power of 3. So 2.0 to 10 to the power of 3 moles. The reaction is carried out at a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 100 atm atmospheres. Forward reaction is exothermic. Explain what happens to the yields of methanol if the temperature is higher than 250 degrees Celsius is used. In a typical reaction where the forward reaction is exothermic, the backward reaction is endothermic. So increasing temperature decreases yield. So the answer will be there will be a smaller yield because higher temperature favors endothermic reaction or reverse reaction. A pressure of 100 atmosphere is used instead of atmospheric pressure. The higher pressure gives a greater yield of methanol and an increased rate of reaction. The question is explain why. If we go back to this particular equation, we will see that in the left hand side we have 3 moles and on the right hand side we have 1 mole. This means this is a, a right, reduction in size almost 300% to 100%, 3 to 1. So the answer will be like this. Higher pressure increases the yield since the equilibrium shifts to the product side because the product has fewer number of molecules. So high pressure favors fewer molecules. The rate of collisions per unit time increases because the reactant particles are more closer together. Okay. And as the rate of collision, you know, rate of collision or rate of reaction increases, all right, rate of uh, collision increases, all right, the rate of molecules, all right, product molecules forming per unit time also increases. A catalyst is used in the reaction to produce methanol from carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Explain how a catalyst increases the rate of a reaction. A catalyst provides a different reaction pathway which has a lower activation energy. So the rate of reaction becomes faster but you know requires a less amount of energy to do so. Suggest why catalyst is used in this industrial process. Do not give answer in terms of increasing rate of reaction. Catalyst is, you know, used in this kind of industrial process mainly to reduce the amount of energy that is needed to do the reaction because uh, the energy comes from like, you know, natural resources like, you know, natural gas, oil, or maybe renewable energy sources. All of these cost money. So re to reduce cost, all right, and to use less energy, these catalysts are used. Suggests the effect of using the catalyst on the equilibrium yields of methanol. So, using a catalyst does not have any effect on equilibrium yield on any reaction. All right. So, we will say no effect. Disposable cups are made from coated paper or polystyrene. Table 6 shows the information of the life cycle assessment LCAs of disposable cups. Wood, mass of the uh, cup 8.3, recyclable, no, biodegradable, yes, energy, you know, when one cup is burned 166, so we can actually burn and get rid of it. And from crude oil, the mass is 1.9, the energy needed is much less, all right, energy released when one cup is burned is much less, all right, not biodegradable, recyclable, yes. Evaluate the use of of coated paper compared with polystyrene to make disposable cover. We will use the knowledge of LCAs. You know. To answer a question like this, we will say that since the polystyrene cups are made from crude oil, it is a finite resource, so we will run out of it after a certain amount of time. However, the wood is a renewable resource and it involves land use for forestry, so less available for agriculture. The wood may involve deforestation, all right, in some places because you know the extraction of the wood will lead to deforestation and that can reduce biodiversity in many places okay in terms of manufacturing both requires energy which are derived from fossil fuels okay paper requires more energy than actually uh, making plastic cups so in that way it might not be as green as we can think it is the paper need more energy for paper potentially you know this can release more carbon dioxide into that sphere which can lead to global warming the paper also involves 
higher water usage. You can see, you know, in the manufacture of paper, it requires a lot more water compared to that for a plastic cup, all right? The packaging requirements are similar, so there is neither uh, advantage or disadvantage in that. In terms of usage, both are single usage. We cannot use more than once, all right? However, the paper releases more energy when it is incinerated or burnt, all right? Whereas the paper will, you know, also decompose if we just put it in landfill. A polystyrene cup releases toxins when it is burnt and we cannot put it in landfill because if you put it in landfill it will never decompose the polystyrene cannot be used to manufacture other products all right so it can be used for manufacturing other products where the paper cannot be used probably for the second uh, you know uh time all right okay as mentioned in the table so you know both can cause a litter and visual pollution if it is not properly managed yeah. Calculate the energy needed to produce one kilogram of coated paper cups. Give your answer in standard form. So first of all, we need to make a conversion of one kilogram is equals to how many grams? One kg is equals to thousand grams. All right. And since each paper cup has a mass of 8.3 grams, so it will be thousand divided by 8.3 which will then give us, all right, uh, the number of cups. Then what we can do after we get the number of cups, we can multiply each of them requiring 550 kilojoules, all right? And that gives us 6.63 into 10 to the power of 4 kilojoules. Melamine is a polymer used to make non-disposable cups. Melamine does not melt when it is heated. So, melamine is a thermosetting polymer, all right, which contains crosslinks between the polymer chains. So, it does not melt when heated. All right, guys. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next video.